Hello, I'm Lara and this is Fenella. Together we're Yoga Bugs Limited. A few years ago we saw the opportunity to bring yoga into schools and we called it Yoga Bugs. We make our money through teacher training courses, ongoing licensing fees and merchandise sales. We are completely unique and have become market leaders with over 800 teachers teaching 35,000 children each week in schools, nurseries and health clubs throughout the UK and Ireland. Children aged 3 to 7 are taken on Yoga Bugs adventures which are creative and fun. They fly on mystical birds, float on magic carpets and surf the ocean waves and they're always the heroes of their stories. Yoga Bugs is for every child. It's physical, it's dynamic, it's educational and it's fun. The company was established in 2004 and our turnover has grown from £120,000 to £390,000. This year, we will make a £60,000 net profit. We want to do for exercise what Jamie Oliver has done for school dinners. Thank you. Lara Goodbody and Fenella Linzel are offering 15% of their yoga business aimed at children in return for the £200,000 they need to expand. Theo Pafitas is curious about what their classes actually offer. Could you just show me briefly what you do do with children? Well, we might go rowing in a boat. <laughs> so we're going on an adventure and we're rowing down the river and we're heave ho, heave. And then mommy and daddy phone us on the telephone and we answer the phone and we have to ask, tell them how we're doing. So it all links into a really fun story idea. And the children don't really appreciate that this is particularly beneficial for their hips or strengthening their upper body. And each posture naturally has an, an ongoing benefit. A confident pitch and attention-grabbing demonstration have got Lara and Fenella off to a good start. Now Richard Farley wants to know if the business is in as good a shape as their claims suggest. How did you get such quick, massive growth? We spent a lot of time working on how we could train people who are talented yoga teachers and, and yogis, and, but how they could bring it in a very sort of... Um, uniformed way to the to the marketplace and so, so you marketing. developed it into a package which could be quite easily taught to teachers yes is that right yeah. teachers pay you some sort of mm. they pay us an annual licensing fee um, for that they get to use the yoga bugs name um, they're allowed to list all their details on our website which acts as a wonderful advertising tool um, they have a, a access to a back office chat room and uh, we've teachers throughout the whole the UK and Ireland and we've trained people overseas so regardless if you're in Seattle or Edinburgh or Cardiff you can look for inspiration. Okay good stuff. The dragons can't seem to find any flaws in yoga bugs but this in itself is unsettling Duncan Bannatyne. Do you know what the big thing that I, I don't understand is why you need any money? The company is going to become self-financing by the end of this year but really right now this investment will really fast track us and, and get us there quicker. What are you going to do with the money? Um, it's broken down into three areas. Um, we're looking at putting 90,000 into the teacher training company, really to further develop the infrastructure, look at creating new revenue streams within that. 40,000 will go into the overseas franchise model um, and then 70,000 will go into developing the brand, the character that we're both wearing, Yoga Bugs, and we're talking to a leading uh, UK children's publisher about bringing out a range of books. Lara and Fenella's ambitious plans include diversifying from their core business into publishing and expanding overseas. Deborah Meaden, though, is worried by what she's heard. There is an area that worries me, and it's just my personal view on investment and that's you going forward and having an army of people working with children out there which uh, you're going to have very little control over and as it's working with children it's just an area that I feel ever so slightly uncomfortable um, about you know third-hand people out there acting with your brand emblazoned across their across their chest so I will say now I'm out. Deborah Meaden has declared herself out early in the proceedings. Has Duncan Bannatyne heard enough to overcome his concerns? Um, Fenella, uh, I'll tell you where I am on this. Um, I don't really think you need the money. 
So I'm going to declare myself out, I'm not going to invest. This is a real setback for Lara and Fenella. Their ambitious plans have lost them two dragons in quick succession. Will Peter Jones rescue their chances of securing the £200,000 investment for a 15% share in yoga bugs? I want to get down to a little bit of the numbers and the nitty gritty because I do like the concept. I do think that fitness and yoga fitness is out there and out there very strong. So the only th issue is that I think that you have overvalued the business, although I, I understand why, because you've done a lot and you've created a great brand. But as an investor, I would want slightly more equity in a share. But I'm willing to offer you £100,000, but I would need to have 15% of the business. But I'd also want to put some caveats against that, and that is that I don't want then either myself or a member of my executive team to work with you closely because if there are decisions and key decisions about spending large sums of money in the business and committing the company, you could encumber it financially. But I'm in. Um, I like the idea. And that would be my offer. You've just got to convince one other dragon to potentially join on those, on those terms. Peter Jones will put up half the cash, but he wants the full 15% equity in return. He's also demanding control over how the money is spent, and Lara and Fenella still need another dragon to match Peter's offer. Otherwise, under Dragon's Den rules, they'll walk away with nothing. I will make out the 200. There'll be a shareholders' agreement in place because our two will be wanting 15, Peter's got 15, and then the 70% that you ladies have, that stops the majority shareholders just out voting us and then going wild. So you have basically 200,000 pounds from two dragons with, but it's taking 30% of your company. Theo Pafitis and Peter Jones have offered Lara and Fenella all the money they came for. But they want 30% of the company, twice what was originally on offer, and they want to impose strict controls on future expansion plans. Richard Farley takes issue with this. I would have a good look at that offer because there's a lot of caveats in there. And, uh, you know, just be careful because it's tricks that people try to play when they invest in companies. Now, I'm Richard, not saying these you, guys are doing that. you get on with your own uh, investment? No, well, I want you to compare the offers. I will give you 200,000 without all this bells and whistles but I want 30% of the business, and I'll give you the 200,000 as a normal investment up front. Could we confer? You may yeah. indeed. Thank you. For 30%. For 30%. Okay. okay. A rift has opened between the dragons. Richard Farley is matching the original offer, but without demanding control over the company. Lara and Fenella now have two competing offers but both mean sacrificing double the equity they were hoping to give away for the £200,000 investment. OK. We came here today looking for £200,000 um, and we do have a very clear, clear vision as to what we want to do with that money and how we can make a success for our business. What Peter and Theo have offered, and whilst we completely value your backgrounds and everything you could possibly put into it, it's not something we would consider accepting. Lara and Fenella have rejected the offer from Theo Pafitis and Peter Jones. They weren't prepared to surrender control. Now they want to try and negotiate with Richard Farley. We came in looking for 15% for £200,000. We've been advised by people that this is the value we should put on the company and the How investment. much did they invest, the advisors? A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of time, finance. a lot of time. Yeah, but they yeah. haven't bought shares no. in no. the business. We haven't offered them. Mm. Um, but just be careful, I'm sure you know that when people value businesses, it's a lot different to value something until you have to actually write a cheque. It's a bit, uh, sure. it's a little bit mm. Sure, I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Are you negotiable on your equity? Could you reconsider what you've put? Um, it's a good offer. So you're not willing to, to consider anything else? Investors have to make money, you know, we, <laughs> we can't just uh, give it away. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully I'll make money at that ratio, but, you know, it's still going to be touch and go.
Richard Farley is refusing to change his offer. It's decision time for Lara and Fenella. We're passionate about what we do and we've worked very hard to get where we are. And whilst your input would be, without a doubt, financially valuable, no, we're no, going to turn you no. down. I think you'll live to regret that. OK, ladies, I wish you the best of luck. Lara and Fenella are leaving empty-handed. In a remarkable show of confidence, they've rejected a massive £200,000 investment, unwilling to sacrifice such a large stake in their business. The dragons are stunned. Oh, Richard, you can't give it away, mate. No one wants my money. £200,000. It's unbelievable. It's oh, a lot, isn't it? It's a lot for a yoga business. Unbelievable. Oh, I think I need some relaxation exercises from you to, uh, to get over that. Why didn't you take the offer? Really, because we believe that um, the company is worth more than that. We, we came in looking for 15% and that's what we wanted. You would have gone above 15, though. No one comes into the Dragon's Den and ends up where they started, we, they? Yes, we would have, but um, they weren't prepared to negotiate and we certainly weren't willing to go as far as 30%. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks very much. Thank you.